Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about sensory filtration. So this is an animal behavior uh, topic. So ethology, this is the topic of ethology. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So let's talk about sensory filtering. So we can see that sensory filtering, it consists of two words. First is sensory and second is filtering, right? So what does that mean? Now, our brain, so let's draw our brain. Suppose this is our brain. So our brain collects information from sense organs, right? So what are the five sense organs we have? Five sense organs we have are eyes, then we have Ears, we have nose, we have tongue, and the last one is skin. Right? So, our brain it collects information from these five. Right? Brain collects information from them and ultimately gives us information about our environment. Right? So, that is called sensory information which comes from sense organs. But, do you think we can respond to all sensory information that we receive by our sense organs? No, we don't. There is a process called filtering which filters out all the unnecessary information. That's why it is called sensory filtering. So, we can write Filtering out of all unnecessary sensory information by an animal is called sensory filtering. Clear? Now, the question is, what are those so-called unnecessary information? Right? What are those unnecessary information? Like you can ask me, I was ditched by my partner, so I don't want to remember that pain. Is it unnecessary information? And can our brain just filter it out? The answer is no. So, what are unnecessary information? To understand that, we need to first understand the types of sensory filtering. So, sensory filtering is of two types. First is peripheral filtering and second is CNS filtering. Now, peripheral filtering is 
a way where filtration of information occurs outside the brain such as in sense organs. So we can write it here. It is the way where filtration of information occurs outside brain such as sense organs right now what are some examples of it okay so could you ever see ultraviolet or infrared light no you didn't see because our eye just filters it out and we are not capable of seeing uv or ir light so this is one example of peripheral filtering so we can write the example unable to see uv or ir light i can give you uh, one more example so our skin contains many receptors such as let me write down caloreceptors one more is frigidoreceptor so different types of receptors are present in our skin caloreceptors only can sense heat it can sense heat only but not cold whereas frigido receptors can only sense cold not heat so in this case calor receptors filters out cold sensitivity and frigido receptors filter out hot sensitivity so these are some examples of peripheral filtering okay let's talk about cns filtering in cns filtering filtration of information occurs in brain here filtration of information occurs in brain that's why it is cns central nervous system and brain occurs in central nervous system that we all know particularly you can say thalamus so particularly thalamus of brain takes part in this filtration now when any information reaches our brain it is analyzed first then it is interpreted right and if found useless it gets rejected without perception so let's see some examples here okay so the first example i would like to give you female moths let me write female 
moths. Did you see moths? So female moths, let me draw one female moth, although this is not looking like moth. So this is the female moth. Now it releases a specific chemical. What is that? That chemical is called pheromone. It is a specific chemical that is released by female moth. Now this chemical has a special power. This chemical attracts their male partners. So here, suppose this is the male partner. So this is attracted by the pheromone which is released by this female moth. But when a female moth releases such a strong chemical in the environment, what do you think? Other insects like uh, other species of insects will not receive that smell? Is it possible? Others will also receive that smell. So suppose this female moth is releasing the chemical. Now here other moths of other species are also there. They are also receiving the smell. But other insects say other male insects of different species, they will not perceive that information. So they will receive that information, but they will not perceive that information. So they will realize, no, it is uh, not for us. Uh, they will uh, not be excited. This occurs in brain. This thing occurs in brain. So these moths, they are receiving the smell, but they are not getting excited because this is not perceived in their brain and they are okay with that. Okay, these females are for others. They are not for us. So they will leave that. So it is unnecessary information for them. So one more example of CNS filtering I am providing you. Now there is a bird called robins. So this is the robin bird. Now male robins are very much aggressive. They are very much aggressive. They always try to protect their territory. But they have a peculiar way to protect their territory. What they do? They attack other male robins by observing red feathers in their breast. So suppose this is one more robin. It is also a male robin and it has red feather in its breast. Now this bird, this is very aggressive. This is protecting its territory. It will attack this bird after seeing the red feather in its breast. Now, although they can see all feather colors but only red color is perceived by their brain. Other colors are filtered out. Therefore, they become ferocious whenever they see any red feather. So, this is one more example of CNS filtering.